Hello everyone and welcome back to the Slow Car Salon. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, Alex, this is not a slow car. What's this doing on the channel? And, well, you're right. It's not a slow car. Slow cars do also have to stop, and with this Lotus, unfortunately the brakes have seen better days and we are now metal to metal from the rotors to the pads. So we'll be handling that with a very quick and simple rotor and brake pad swap. So let's get started. So the first step of course is jacking up the car, but the Lotus Elise is a little bit more special than others with its bonded aluminum chassis because there are actually only very few jacking points for the car. Two behind the front axle and then two in front and two behind the rear axle. Now, if you're putting this on a two post lift, of course, there's a very special procedure you must follow. But since we're just doing one side at a time, the left first and then the right, we're just going to jack up the car first by the points in front of their rear axle. And considering the whole chassis is stiff enough and most of the weight is in the rear, this being a mid-engine car, when we lift up from that rear point, the whole side will come up and we can slip a jack stand underneath the front point and then leave it, put it back on the ground and then do the same for the other side. And of course, to not damage any of the soft aluminum panels as the whole underside of the car is covered with aluminum panels, we have hockey pucks to go where the jack points are supposed to be. So we're gonna start with that and get the car up in the air. So now we got the car up in the air. We ended up going with wooden blocks instead of a jack stand just because it was far too tall. Of course, with hockey pucks right underneath where the uh, jack point is supposed to go. And here's what we found when we pulled off the wheel. There's a quite a significant lip on both sides of the brake rotor here, which definitely means that we've had some wear on the rotor itself. Now we did hear some metal scraping, uh, and I believe that was on the passenger side. So I guess when we open up that side, we'll find out. But this is now pretty much ready to take apart and throw the new pad and rotor on. Looks like the rotor is held on with one little Allen bolt here in order to keep it on the hub. And pads, looks like they're held in with one single clip here uh, with two little rods. We'll pull out the clip, rods come out, and the brake pads will pop straight out the top. So we decided we work on the other side at the same time while I was working on the left side. And it turns out the Lotus is so stiff that the other side, at least just the front, came off the ground with just the other side jacked up. That's pretty amazing. So while he's getting the wheel off, he's gonna start working on this side. I'm gonna pull the caliper off here and I found that it's just held on with these two little Allen bolts up top, just like a racing caliper, like a Willwood or something like that, where the bolts are uh, positioned through the caliper and they go into a bracket. So that's perfect. So then I'm just gonna pull that off and then take out the pads from there. All right, so now everything is pretty much pulled off. It turned out to be much simpler than I thought it was gonna be. And just take a look at all the suspension in here. It's really, really light really, really thin, very, very small. So ver lots of unsprung weight saved here. Um, now, this being a British car, it still has, despite the Japanese engine, some British quirks. And part of that includes the fact that sometimes the suspension members can come apart and get loose, especially the tow links for the rear hubs. So now is especially if you're a lease owner or exige owner, it's a good time to go in there and check all of your suspension links and make sure everything's nice and tight. So now this is going to be just a simple matter of slotting in the new pads, also making sure we compress our uh, cylinders here in the caliper so that we can get the much thicker pads in there. Then of course we're gonna get a new spring clip and whatnot. We're gonna clean up the uh, caliper pins a little bit as well. And then everything's gonna go back together and that should pretty much be it. Here's a quick little difference between the uh, old and new. You can obviously see how much the rotor surface has been chewed away on the old one and how awesome and brilliant and clean the new ones look. Of course, they're both just the same uh, drilled design. Um, they, don't, they don't have slots, unfortunately, but I think that's just fine. Another thing we just noticed is that, see how there's a little ch uh, chamfer on the uh, drill holes here? And I guess that's almost a wear marker because if you look at the old ones, they're completely gone. It's just a straight edged hole. If your brake discs look like that and they should originally have this chamfer on them, then it's definitely time to replace your discs. 
Now, of course, before everything goes together, make sure to give your rotor a really good clean with some brake clean. We want no oils or any dirt or anything on there before they touch the new pads. Also, for the caliper, make sure your caliper bolts, if they didn't have Loctite on them before, do put some on there. We're gonna use a little bit of blue on the threads here, like so, and tighten it all back up with that. Now time to pop the brake pads in. So one just goes in like that. Come on, don't make this hard for me. We're on camera. Hmm. hmm, interesting. I've compressed the piston all the way though. So why is this giving me a hard time? So we had quite an issue trying to get those brake pads in. They actually would simply not go in. Yes, we were able to shove one brake in, but the disc would have been actually completely seized, even with just one of these in, due to the fact there's just way too much material on this pad, considering we can't get the uh, brake pistons compressed any more than they already are. They're pretty much already maxed out. Just any residual uh, brake pressure is just kind of pressing them out slightly. But besides that, yeah, these are just way too thick, and they kind of marred them up and when we had to get them out, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to find a different manufacturer for brake pads although these Bosch ones would have been probably very good we, ne we need somebody that hopefully has the correct size I know so it seems that this uh, company has boshed up their manufacturing quality ha, 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 ha. so as much as I hate to unfortunately the old pads have to go in just for now until we can get some replacement units water that's the reason why interesting so we're also finding that even though the pads are actually to spec our rotors are much much thicker because we measured against the thickest part of the rotor here where it hadn't been worn away and we are measuring about 24.77 millimeters and the rotors over here measure about 26 millimeters and that's quite significant so we might have to even look into getting different rotors too holy shit 26.33 so that's nearly that's about what is that uh 1.6 millimeters thicker something like that yeah that's pretty significant so our pads should work but our rotors are just so significantly thicker i mean in some ways that's great in others not so great we could fit our old pads or rather our new pads by sanding them down a bit but then we lose material or try to get these returned and find another set of uh, rotors that are meant to work with the car instead all right, I think what we're gonna do just for brevity here because we want to get this all back together and not have to wait for parts to go back and come back here again is we're actually just going to sand the pads down. Now, we hope, hope we didn't mar them up too much in trying to, in terms of trying to pound them back out of the caliper. Um, so these should be still be okay. I think we only have just a millimeter or two of material to remove. So it shouldn't be too bad, but it's unfortunately the route we have to take now. All right, you can probably hear our table saw grinder going away in the background, but we've ground down the pads just enough and they slip in easily on both sides. Now you might think this is a little jank, but actually there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, perhaps the only thing wrong with it is that you'll have less brake pad material, but you kind of sometimes have to make do with what you got and make it work. So this is great. Now you got to do it to the rest of the other three pads. Okay. So yeah, caliper bolts are at 45 foot pounds. So we're pretty much all ready to get it back together, right? Yeah, could you verify? 40, 45 foot pounds? Yeah, I torqued them on the other side. When we untorqued it, it was that, about that. It felt that way, right? Felt that way, yeah. yeah. It didn't feel like 80 pounds. I'm just going to slip that on, put the lug bolts in, do the same for the other side, put the car back down. No need for bleeding because the car isn't driven that often. And yes, brake fluid is hydroscopic, but no need because, again, mileage and it was already done last year. So time to bolt it up and then break the brakes in. At this point, it's time to take the car out to get the brakes broken in. Uh, of course, you don't want to go too aggressively for the first few hundred miles at least, or at least enough to bed the pads in into the new rotors. Our break-in procedure to bed in the brake pads consisted of about 10 runs of braking mildly from 40 to zero and then about five runs braking a little bit more aggressively from 50 to zero. Once we let the brakes cool, 
We drove on for a little bit longer and tried not to have too much fun driving along. <laughs>